Hi, this is Needlepointers.com. Today I'd like to show you how to take a plain brown box and turn it into something special like this using decoupage. Now you don't have to make yours in St. Patty's Day theme. I just did that because St. Patty's Day is coming up soon and I thought that would be a good theme for my boxes. You can use any theme you want. These can be made into gift boxes or just for decoration around your house. For decoupaging, you will need some scrapbook paper. You need a ruler, some Mod Podge. This is a really big one. It comes in much smaller containers than this, so you don't need to buy a huge one. You will need some brushes or paintbrush or foam brush, scissors, an X-Acto knife, and and a pencil. You'll also want to have a piece of cardboard that you can cut on with the exacto knife so you do not damage your table. And I'm using some I'm using some freezer paper to put my things my boxes on as they're drying. As you can see I started one box already and I'll show you how to do the second box. I picked out another St. Patty's Day uh, theme paper and this is a uh, clover and I'm going to put this clover on the top and the bottom and then add some extra stuff on it. When you're wrapping your box you want to make sure that you have enough paper that will wrap around to the inside a little bit. I mean, you can make it right even to the edge also if you'd like, but I like mine to wrap around slightly. So I am measuring just by putting the paper around the box and getting an idea where I, sh where I need to cut the, the paper or mark it. So I can do it along the edge here and I'd say about right there and I just mark it and then going the other direction I'm going to use the ruler to find out how far it is and it's about six and seven eighths which is so once I have my square mark then I can cut out the piece with the exacto knife And I cut on my cardboard so to be sure that I'm not um, going to mess up my table. So the next step then will be I'm going to just crease this up so I have an idea of where I want to place my box down on the paper once I put the glue on the bottom. Next, I'm going to take some Mod Podge on my brush and just brush it on to the bottom of the box. Make sure you get a good coverage on the box. And then I'm going to place the box down on the paper. Next, I'm going to cut some slits into the sides because I'm going to wrap the I'm going to fold up the sides, but I'm going to wrap the, these around the side first and then fold the other piece up. So I'm going to make some slit. This is going to wrap around pretty far, and I probably don't want it to wrap that far around. So I can cut out. I want, some, I want it to wrap around a little bit at least. So I can cut, and I'm just eyeballing it because this is going to be underneath. So it just needs to wrap around slip somewhat, and then the other side is going to cover it up so, so it doesn't have to be exact. So my next step is I'm going to fold this up and around the corner like that. So take some more Mod Podge 
and paint it on there. And I'm going to paint it on, put it on the side too, where it's going to wrap around. Okay. So then we fold it up and smooth it out. I want to make sure the bottom is also smooth. Smooth it out and then wrap the little ends around the corners. might need some paper towels also so you can wipe off your fingers as you get some glue on it the Mod Podge. I'm going to, going to continue with the second the other side the opposite side and smooth it out. You can also use a credit card or some kind of card to uh, run along there and smooth it to make sure it stays smooth. Next I want to fold the, this edge underneath and wrap it inside a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of Mod Podge and put it on the inside edge where it should be wrapping around. And then carefully wrap this around. It should wrap inside nicely. So it's nicely smoothed out and wrapped around. I'm going to continue with the next side. Now one thing is be careful when your hands are sticky because I found that on this one I was touching the side when it was sticky and my finger was sticky and it actually pulled up a piece of the paper there. So now I have the two sides done and wrapped around to the inside. The next is to do the, the last two sides. So now I'm just going to put the Mod Podge over top of the whole thing, even the folded over parts, and I'm going to smooth this up. Then I'm going to wrap this around to the inside. So once you have the scrapbook paper all on your box, what you want to do is to put Mod Podge over everything, the whole box. Now I'm only do, going to do the outside of the box right now and I'll leave it dry before I do the inside edge of the box. So you just paint the Mod Podge over the entire thing and it dries clear. So now I'm going to put my box down and I'll leave it dry. For these boxes, this box I've started already, I've put two layers of Mod Podge on there so far. So the outside of this box is now somewhat dry. It's not fully dry but once it's been drying for, you know, a few minutes you can put another coat on and so I'm going to put a second coat on this box and then after I have, this is well dried then I'm going to put a couple coats on the whole inside of the box and that's going to make the box all sealed and with the Mod Podge and, and nice and pretty. I'll be back after these are dry Oh, the one other thing I did was this box had in it had some writing on the inside cover. So what I did was I just cut a piece of the paper and I put it on the inside and Mod Podged it down. Okay, so the boxes have dried pretty well and I can keep putting more coats on here if I'd like to, but I think this one is pretty good. The last step I was going to do was I took this sheet of paper that has all different words on it and I cut, I fussy cut out a whole bunch of the different words and I'd like to decoupage 
on to the top of the box some of the words. You want to have the the Mod Podge underneath. So I'm just going to put a layer on and then stick my words down. Then once again we just decoupage or paint over top of the words and we can do a couple layers to make sure that they're nicely sealed on there. For this box where I pulled off some of the paper what I'm going to do is take some of these little clovers and I'm going to stick one over top of the spot that I accidentally got stuck to my finger and I'll decoupage over these and I'm going to put one on each side so it looks like I meant to do it. So that's a good way to cover up your mistake. So I'll be back in a while after these have all dried and show you the finished product. So here are my two finished boxes. The one thing I did find is that if the boxes have a tight fit lid, that adding the paper and the Mod Podge to the inside to the box and the inside of the lid makes them fit very snugly um, and a little bit hard to fit. So I would recommend finding boxes that have a little bit more space for uh, around them if you're going to do this kind of box. Or don't put the Mod Podge as much on the inside edge of the inside of the lid there so that you have more room. But I like how these turned out and they'll make good decorations around the house for St. Patty's Day. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you'd like to see more pictures or get a step-by-step -step photo tutorial of what we did in this project, then please click the link in the iCard or in the description of this video. That will take you to our website, needlepointers.com, where there will be the pictures and the d instructions and also links to where to purchase the Mod Podge and other supplies that you can use for this project. Please click the like button, share our projects on Pinterest, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other craft tutorials and instructions.